Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in Visual Basic and today we're going to be going over quite a bit of stuff. We're going to be going over input boxes, list boxes, and loops. So I'm going to be talking relatively quickly. So input boxes basically is an alternative form of collecting whatever information a user types in and assigning it to a variable. So first, we're going to have to create a variable, right? So I'll call it dim input as string. And I'll explain why I'm making it a string in a moment. And then for our button add, as you can see, I called it add. I'll call it, I'll type out the variable name input, and I'll set it, set it equal to whatever the user types in, which is input box. And then inside goes three pieces of information. First is type in a string. That's whatever pops up, so you can make it whatever you'd like. I'll make it input required. Now that's the piece of information that goes in the upper left corner of the little window and whatever default value you'd like it to be. I'll just make it zero. And let's have it pop out on the label. Whatever we type in will be equal to input. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Dot text. There we go. Excuse me. Dot to string. And let's check this out. See how it works. So add, and there it says type in a string, input required, default value zero, hello, and there it is. Um, I'm ha ah, the application is talking to me. I like that. Eh, maybe not. Anyways, so yeah, that's about it for input boxes. And just so you know, whatever you type in will always be read as a string. Now there is a way of converting it into an integer, but I don't want it, or any other kind of number, but I don't want to get into that just yet. Okay, so the next thing. I would like to show you our list boxes and there's a bunch of different things that you can do with list boxes and basically it's just a collection of data it could be strings numbers both whatever you'd like and I'll call it list I don't know collection and don't worry that's just the name of the list box it doesn't actually appear during runtime and there's multiple things I would like to show you including how to remove items so allow me to copy and paste this for future's sake and I'll call it btn remove and at the bottom I'll call it remove there we go so let's go back to the add now in order to add something to the list box what you would type out is the name of the list so list collection is what we called it dot items uh, dot add and then inside the parentheses goes the name of whatever you want to put in well we're, we made it a variable so it will be the variable. So you click add, put in high, click add, type in buy. You can uh, throw in the default value if you like, just whatever. Uh, now each one of these is given an index number as soon as it's as soon as it's put in our list box, and basically the index number is basically the position it's in in our list box. So high is the first position which is index zero always starts at zero buy is number one and then zero is number two so that's the way to look at it so let's try to figure out how to uh, throw in that information so label output or how to retrieve that information so you wouldn't really use it this way but let's figure it out uh, the first thing I'd like to actually show you is items dot count whoops um, oh that's not what I want to do yet oh yeah label outputs dot text is equal to and then list collections and then what you would retrieve to get uh, how many number of items are in there is items dot count and this will retrieve the number of items that are in there whoops dot do string there we go and then click add so I don't know let's put in high so now this says there's one item in there by now it says there's two items in there and you know so on so forth and it keeps updating how many items are in there so that's how the items dot count works the next one I would like to show you is how to actually retrieve well whatever um, item is in a certain index number in order to do that just have items right there and then inside you type in the index number let's just put zero and then um, 
uh, dot to string. There we go. And that should work. I'll click save and let's build this guy. So I'll add in, so it will only take whatever the first word is. Hello world and there it is. I type in, I don't know, hi. Still doesn't change because it only did index zero, which is the first one. Uh, the next one I would like to show you is, and I should probably type these out, huh? I'm so sorry about this. So, okay, so the first one that we did, what was the first one that we did? Items.add. The first one that we did, and the next one we did, and what goes before the dot is the name of the list box. Uh, the next one that we did was items.count. The next one that we did was items, and then what goes inside is, I'm sorry, index number. And now the next one I would like to show you is the selected item, which pretty much does the same same thing really. Dot selected item. And then inside goes well actually nothing goes inside there. And what that does is returns string of what is selected, basically. So um, I'm actually going to use the remove button for that one just for a quick example. So uh, for the remove, I do not have the code out for that one, so I'll double click remove. And then in here, uh, and now it's not going to be removing yet. I'm just going to show you the this next one right here. And what you can do is type in list collection and then dot selected. Whoops, I want items. Or uh, just item because we're just selecting one. And whoops, I want that to be equal to the label. Label dot text is equal to this dot to string. There we go. So if I press F5 and I run this again, I could type in, I don't know, hi by, um, I don't know, three or nine, I don't know. And if I type, and I click this and click remove, well now in the label it put down whatever we selected so it put it on number nine for us. That's really, really nice. Uh, another thing you can do is use selected index. Index. And it will return the index number instead. So if I go in, um, hi, by, I don't know, these are really bad examples. Uh, so this would be index number one, right? And it is, there it is. Okay, oh my goodness, this is so much. And what is the next one? Uh, select an index, items clear, items remove. Okay, so we're gonna learn how to remove items now. Yep, I have notes out. I always, I always uh, try to make sufficient notes. Okay, so we wanna be able to remove. So in order to do this, what we can do is type out, okay, so we have list, collections, dot items, dot remove, and then type in remove at, and then inside this goes the index number of what you want to remove. But what if we want to be able to select it at free will? Well, what you do is type in list collections dot and then selected index. Whoops. And then it will automatically remove whatever we have clicked. So I'll throw in hi, by. And then if I just want to remove the by, I click remove, and there it goes. So that's cool. And then there's also items.clear. So I'm just going to make this, I'm just going to copy all this, copy, and then make it a comment, because I want to keep this there. Paste, and then clear. And basically what that does is just gets rid of all of them. Add a b C, uh, remove, and it gets rid of all of them. Uh, so that's really nice, and that's uh, pretty much it with the list boxes. And you know what? Uh, I'm actually going to go on to loops in the next video because uh, I know that's going to definitely eat up more than, than the time I have left. So I'll leave it here. You know what? I'll type out the rest of the stuff that I had here for list boxes. I can o always do that. So we had items dot remove at so I'll, I'll capitalize it for you remove at and then what I would usually do is the name of it dot selected index 
and that will pretty much remove it move whatever item you have highlighted dot items dot clear that works as well and oh yeah don't don't forget about your to string that's that will help out a lot and is that everything items index number I think that's a dot to string as well okay so I'll leave it here and now see you in the next tutorial in order to do loops now I'm gonna make this a two-parter only because I'm gonna be using exactly what I already have written here to continue so I'll see you in the next tutorial